thought I'd have a few slides here on QuickBooks so that, especially if you're dealing with QuickBooks clients, you'll, you'll know some key things related to that. Plus, most systems are set up with the same methodology or mentality as QuickBooks, so it's kind of easy to use QuickBooks as an example. The key things you'll usually be able to look at is the deposits that get recorded, uh, any checks that were written, and then you should be able to get any kind of reconciling of those accounts and reports that you want. So this is the flow that uh, QuickBooks usually presents when it opens up. When it comes to cash, uh, most systems like QuickBooks have both banking uh, options that you can choose and you can see there, you can make deposits, you can transfer funds, you can reconcile the account, write checks, look at the register. You can even have automated bank feeds that uh, feed right into the QuickBooks system or again, feed into the other systems that are out there. There's lots of reports, uh, banking reports. You can see all the deposit details, check details, uh, missing checks. And I'll show you some of these reports later on, but they're very helpful tools when you're doing an audit. A cash function that uh, companies can also do is receipt of customer payments and that has a tab across the top or an option across the top that says customers and you'll see receive payments. One of the first places I start when I look at QuickBooks is I'll go into the reports and I'll look at company and financial reports and I'll do the balance sheet and usually that'll bring up the uh, different accounts that are out there if they've got any values in them. So in this particular case, we've got um, a balance sheet that has the Bedrock Bank or the Town of Bedrock, and we'll be looking at those accounts. But here's a little trick that I need you to remember. Uh, sometimes accounts are made inactive, so you don't see them. Or sometimes the reports are uh, get rid of zero balances. Well, if you've got a fraudulent account out there that you in and out zero, it'll never show up on this balance sheet report. So you can customize these reports to say, show all accounts. And then you might see a cash account that pops up there as zero. You want to click on that to see if there has been any activity in that zero account, because it may have some fraud actions in there and be hidden because it's a zero balance all the time. So just one of those little side Tim certs about uh, balance sheets and cash accounts. Now, if you click on any of those cash balances you saw at the balance sheet, it'll automatically open up a transaction detail uh, viewing for you so you can see any of the transactions that you have out there. You can also export this to Excel if you wanted to, which is makes it a lot easier to work with. But you'll see that it shows usually the amount that's out there. And again, these all came from an accounts payables that were entered. So that's why you'll see accounts payable as the offsetting account to that cash account. Another area that you saw on there was a check register. That was part of the banking. When you click on that, you can view all of the items that are affecting that cash account as though you were opening up your checkbook and looking at it that way. And you can click on any of these and edit the transactions. You'll see that edit transaction uh, up there that allows you to open up the original transaction and no matter what form it came in, whether it was a journal entry, a bill payment, uh, you know, through a check, or if it was a deposit, it'll open up that original uh, transaction for you to view. So we opened up one of those check transactions and it brings us right to the check as it was written in QuickBooks. You'll see one of the problems with QuickBooks is it is pretty easy to change things. All these areas that are open, you could change. That's why that audit trail function that I'll talk about in a little bit is really important. But if you're doing your substantive tasks and you're verifying checks, you're verifying invoices that were paid, things like that, uh, you can actually run a report on these things. But if you wanted to see the original check itself and how it was put into QuickBooks, that's very easy to do, just like it is in many systems. Transfers that you see between accounts, 
you know, they pop up all the time. And again, QuickBooks has an actual transfer function. You can see which account it went into, which account uh, it came out of. So if you see a transaction, you're unsure, you can usually go to that date and you'll be able to potentially see where the other side of that transaction is. The transfer funds in QuickBooks, it does, you know, you can put anything in that memo and it automatically fills with funds transfer. What I found too is you can't actually delete a fund transfer. You can delete checks and things like that, but you can't delete fund transfers. You have to change it to zero if you're going to change it. But again, all these things will then come up in your audit trail. This is what a deposit can look like in QuickBooks too. So if we clicked on a deposit transaction, it would open up this deposit screen and it would show the different things that money was received for, that those are the revenue accounts that are recorded for the town of Bedrock in this case, and all the different amounts that lead up to that deposit that we should see on our bank statement of that $13,000. If you're doing sampling, and again, you should be able to get a check detail list. So, for example, QuickBooks has this check detail list. It is something that you can see. There's an Excel option. You can shoot it out into Excel, clean it up a little bit, do your data cleanup, and have just the checks and check numbers and money out there that you can then run against some sort of non-statistical sampling or sampling process to make your selections.